What's happening people, it's Phil Free Yen here. Uh, the first story I wanted to talk about today was this uh, story that Twitch is now allowing people to watch people eat food. Uh, it's kind of strange, but from my research it seems that it's quite popular in Korea, it's like a porn type thing. What's it called? Uh, yeah, it's called Mukbang. <laughs> and yeah, Twitch is seeming to allow people to do this, it's called social eating, so you can just tune in, watch people eat food. Like, I understand the gaming, on Twitch and then that, I understand the boobs as well and how like Twitch used to be about gaming you could watch people play games and stuff and now people just you know the most popular people are people with big boobs so if you're a gamer guy probably gonna be difficult for you to compete and now there's this food thing I just I just don't see it I, I'm, I don't want to watch so many food like if I was hungry that would really frustrate me I guess it's like if you were lonely at home you could be like having a meal with someone or something who knows but it's kind of strange what about you guys? Are you going to end up watching people eat? Do you think it's something you're tuning in for? Do you think it's just, you know, one of those career and exports that isn't really going to take off? Let me know in the comment sections below. Love to hear your comments as always. And this next thing I want to talk about is Professor Brian Cox. Uh, if you haven't heard of Brian Cox or seen any of his shows or stuff, it's worth watching. He's just a really passionate guy about science. He's done this show called In the Night Sky, which was like on the BBC where you would like talk about space every day in the evening and go out and like check out bits and stuff. It was really cool and the passion he puts into like his talks on science just makes science so much more interesting. I always had this theory that if uh, schools actually done something decent they could just replace all the teachers with teacher assistants and just pay all that salary to one expert and broadcast to that whole country. I think it would be so much better like I would have learned so much more in science if I had Brian Cox teaching me just because he's so passionate about it instead of the teachers that I did have they were just like there's the book sit down read it I got a hangover because I was playing in my band last night. <laughs> Yeah, that was good. We used to always better get him to like mess up the lessons just say, Sir, could you uh, play us a song on your guitar? And he'd be like, oh, should be teaching you science, but hey, let's get the guitar out. And he had it in his closet and just bring his guitar out and start strumming away. <laughs> like, it wasn't very, we didn't enjoy the music, but it was better than the boring science. And if we had Brian Cox, I didn't even think we would have done that. The other thing I want to say about this is it's annoying because he's saying basically that the government's anti-expert stance is kind of just stupid you know if you've got people that have studied for years to be an expert in the field then you should take their opinion and basically michael gov's uh, saying we don't you know we, we shouldn't listen to people with experts sometimes we should just go on a whim or <laughs> our feelings or whatever i don't know what he's trying to say it just seems so stupid but it's kind of because like a little while ago we had um, a guy that the government employed called david nutt who was their government body for like going over the government drug policies and basically he turned around to the government and said to them look uh, the only thing dangerous about cannabis is the fact that people can get a criminal record by having it and the government didn't like this and even though it was based on science and logic and there was tons and tons of paperwork backing him up they fired him and just went based on their own opinions or their own feelings on the subject which is i i really don't trust that sort of thing you should make decisions based on opinions when there's actually scientific proof that it is some other way. Anyway, it made for some great headlines, you know, because he's called David Nutt and he got sacked. So it's like, yeah, David Nutt sack, uh, Nutt sack him. I know, loads of joke headlines, but the underneath story was far from a joke. You know, the UK not listening to experts they've paid to be an expert in that field because they don't, you know, they don't agree with their opinions. It, it's not the way a country should progress forward, but as we know, countries don't really progress forward, they just kind of stay in the same loop. So anyway, moving on from that, because that's kind of frustrating. There was this article posted on Kotaku, which was about all the Japanese games that, you know, influenced over in the Western world, UK, America, all these places. And I, I was going through, I didn't realise how much a heavy influence we had. Like, even back from Space Raiders, they had, they had first it was like Space Raiders, which I, when I was younger, my uncle um, owned an arcade and he gave us a Space Invaders arcade machine. Even though we lived in a tiny house with like, I had three sisters, we still had this in the in the kitchen. It's taken us Sarah's room. We had to chuck it out after a while. I think it broke or something, but it was amazing. And you could like, people would come around and put money in it and play and you just have an arcade at home. It was, I, when I was a kid, I thought it was one of the best things in the world. Um, the next one was Pac-Man. You know, Pac-Man, I remember Pac-Man on an Acorn Electron. Even though the Acorn Electron's an old, old computer, I was so poor that I didn't get it until later. So it's probably more around Sega Genesis time. <laughs> and then Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong was massive and from that, Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Brothers was just pivotal. It was like one of the best games I ever played. Just that you could go through all these different levels, they all had different themes and yeah, that was amazing. And then next one obviously is uh, Sonic. But it's a Mega Man as well, which was a really addictive game. And that was kind of fun with two players, Street Fighter, Super Mario Kart, like Pokemon, obviously, 
just goes on and on. Resident Evil, Castlevania, and then Final Fantasy, Metal Gear Solid, Legend of Zelda. Like, it's probably quicker to actually look at what games we put out that actually worked. I know we have some now, like UK, US, they have quite a bit better de game developers now, but back in the day, it was all Japanese games. Anyway, what was? did you play any of these games and what was your favourite? Let me know below, I'd love to hear your opinions on that. Yeah, this next story, I don't know if it's fake or not. Like, when I first seen it, I thought it was so funny, but that's just me. And it's not necessarily a nice thing that I find it funny, it's kind of bad, because it's not nice. This magician on this Polish uh, news show was trying to do this trick where you put a, knee, a nail in a bag or something, and then you have three bags and like... You have to trust that he's got to put your hand down on the bag without the nail. And accidentally he puts the hand down and impales a hand on the nail. I'm sorry for laughing. Like, I don't know. Does this make me a bad person for laughing about this? I think a lot of people would find this funny. Like, she didn't die. It's not terrible. Like, if something really bad happened, then, you know, I'd feel bad and be like, oh, I'm sorry. But, like, seeing someone do something stupid like this and you see her hand here, like, she's in pain. After laughing about it, I looked at the comments and stuff and a lot of people say it's good promotion for the new show and it's faked and you had the internet FBI on looking at it saying there's no blood, you know, her hand's different, nail's different, and it enhanced that image. So, yeah, I'm not sure. There is no blood and I would imagine there would have been if it impaled, but it might just be a really clean insertion, so there's no, I don't know. Anyway, it was funny to see, and even if it was a, you know, a hoax just to get promotion for their news channel, then fair enough. You know, you kind of caught me, even though I'm probably never going to watch your news channel, but you got me, my eyeballs, for a minute. This next video is kind of scary. I watched it and was like, what the hell is this all about? And then I realised it's all about gun crime and how they're trying to like teach you that you should have your gun in safe you know it is in america obviously because in the uk you don't really have guns unless you have a legal gun and yeah you've got to keep it in a gun cabinet with the ammo in another gun cabinet and it's kind of basics but i think there should be some regulation on who gets guns i think you need to screen people after all this trouble in america you just there's people that are so stupid you know i don't and i'm not saying gun owners are stupid i totally agree with people that say you know if other people have got guns out there i need guns to protect my family and i think there is a lot of people that use guns safely like in the military we're trained to handle guns safely and the fact that a gun isn't uh, dangerous unless a person has it like a gun even a uh, like loaded weapon with safety off line there isn't dangerous until somebody interferes with it so having it in a locked safe and having your ammo in another locked safe i think it's you know, sensible, especially if you've got kids in the house. Not just for the fact that you'd get in trouble with the law, the fact that your kid could get hurt. You know, you don't want your child getting hurt because you were too lazy to, or just you didn't want to have to have it there. And kids see guns all the time from a young age, just on all the media, on TV, and it's always like heroes and stuff, so they're going to want to play with it. So just do, do yourself a favour, get yourself a cabinet, lock it up. Or even just get a Glock, they have a Glock lock on, and just keep the Glock lock on. Put the key on your key in and you're safe. You know, that's one of the great things about Glock is that they have the lock. Anyway, I don't want to mess with Americans' rights and guns and stuff, but if you do have a gun in your house, just make sure it's safe from the children. And then I want to finish with uh, Prodigy from uh, Mob Deep. I uh, haven't heard from him for ages, but basically there's a comic coming out, and he's done like a the intro track for it. It's called uh, A Nation Under Our Feet, and it's the Black Panther series. And the song's pretty good, actually. It's, it's totally different. It's not what I expected from him, to be honest used to be all like kind of hip-hop sample based music like the old mob deep you probably heard the shook ones which was like one of the most popular tracks they done still plays like a lot these days but this is kind of like an edm style sound and I've, i'm quite impressed with it to be honest if you done an album of this i'd be interested in listening to that anyway and yeah i'll put links to everything in the description so you check out the music the black panther comic trailer any of that sort of stuff, it'll be in the description below. Have any comments you want to add, please let me know below. Like I say, I try to respond to all of them. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week.